And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, as you're aware, we return once more to the famous, or nay, should I say, infamous Santon Church, or St. Helen's Church, or All Saints Church, whichever way you want to describe it. It's the place which is inhabited by the spirit of the Reverend Kendall, Richard Kendall Esquire, who lived during the Civil War period and was banished as a priest because of his lewd and licentious behavior. In fact, it's alleged that within this church, or the church which existed during that time, and I will add a little bit more detail to that, it is alleged that he had orgies with young ladies from the village and that uh, a number of people indulged in this. Of course, the church got to hear about it and he was expunged. He was thrown out of the living and it wasn't until the resurgence of monarchy at the end of the Civil War that he was invited to return to this parish, fully augmented once more as the local parish priest. The question you may ask, why would they, bearing in mind his past reputation, why would they give him his job back? Well, the simple answer is, they thought, and this is just a theory of course, that he was opposed to the Roundheads, the Parliamentarians, and was a supporter of the King. Nothing could be further from the truth. The bottom line is, is that the Reverend Kendall hated Puritans and they were the ones that complained about him, and they were the ones that got him moved from his job. And he described them as being hypocrites. Hypocrites in the sense that they didn't abide by the living in the sense that he did. They claimed that they lived pious lives. His view was that they were whoring and drinking as much as what he was during that period of history. And of course, during the English Civil War, any of this is quite possible. Now, I touched very briefly on the church. I'm actually standing inside version 3. Version 1 I think was a chapel of rest. It was very small. It's built on the original footprint by the way of the original medieval chapel. I think that this was a stopover for people on their pilgrimage routes traveling to the holy sites across the country and they could stop here for a while and make prayer to God before taking on the next stage of their long journey. Well, suffice to say, after the reformation of the church under Henry VIII, this chapel of ease had no further purpose, and so it became a derelict ruin until the 17th century, when a Lordian-style church was erected on the same footprint. Now, who would have financed such a, a task, bearing in mind that the church had no use for building here, period, anyway, so why would someone build a church on the original footprint? Well, it turns out that the man who financed this undertaking was in fact a tax collector for the state. He would seize lands and properties and monies owed to the state, and I'm beginning to suspect but in order for him to make his claim for eternal life, he wanted to build this church, but use funding that he procured from his job. And in fact, as you can see on this black letter plate here on the floor, you can see the details about Mr. Bancroft and his life during that period of history. Moving a little bit further along, Along came the Reverend Kendall, who obviously took over in that church that was built by Bancroft. And then that too, in later years, because of his licentious and lewd behaviour, it obviously became an embarrassment to the local parish of St Mary's nearby. And so that church was abandoned. And of course it fell into a derelict ruin, until the 19th century when along came a man, a priest by the name of the Reverend Weller Pooley, who decided that he wanted to build his own personal chapel here, which was named All Saints, or perhaps it was named St Helens originally. All that detail is kind of lost into the darkness of time. But the interesting thing about Weller Pooley was he has the most grand grand monument on his grave and that's where he's buried so when you come to this tiny chapel this tiny church and you see this huge monument to this man this large gravesite 
It makes you wonder whether, again, he, like Thomas Bancroft, was trying to ensure his own existence into immortality. Who knows? Unfortunately, we can never answer any of these questions, and so we can only theorize, but I think it's a good theory. Now, the church was left with a problem, because after the Reverend Weller Poli died, they tried to keep it running. In fact, they kept it running until the 1970s, when they quite clearly could not upkeep two churches. So after a period of a few years, it was handed over to uh, a Norfolk Trust that was set up, I believe, through the auspices of Norfolk County Council, who actually renovated this building. And it's looked after by local people. And of course, this amazing chapel sits in such a beautiful and almost secluded part of the English countryside, just over the border into Norfolk from Brandon in Suffolk. And so this church, having been abandoned and being visited on a daily basis by people, is also used by bats. And during the summer months, paranormal investigations here are banned in order for the bats to breed. And sometimes late at night, you can be sat here quite quietly, and all of a sudden you feel a, a draft and a flap over your face. It's one of the bats moving across very, very quickly. And to some people, it can add quite a jolt. But what is really interesting about this church is the fact that the Weller Polies during the 19th century who had this rebuilt were friendly with Augustus Welby Pugin. Pugin had uh, a very close affinity to the churches of the old beliefs in the form of the Catholic Church, but the fact that he also carried out renovation work at medieval churches. And one I want to quote here, a reference, is actually Westo Medieval Church, which unfortunately today is on the site of a battleground. Pugin apparently used some of the rubble from the renovation work, which was carried over here to the Well of Polies, and this church was built from the remains of what they didn't need at Westow. But the best part is, there are, if you like, signatures to the presence of Augustus Welby Pugin, and particularly when you walk into the chancel and you look up at the ceiling and you look at the woodwork and the carvings, it is all very retrospective. So there is a commonality in the design that follows through, not just from the Houses of Parliament, but also in this tiny chapel, and of course, at Westow Church. Now, before I introduce Eddie again to you, we have a special guest, and she actually is a seasoned paranormal investigator from Surrey originally. And she's moved into Suffolk. She's got a really beautiful Suffolk country cottage. And she's obviously quite keen on investigating this building because she's heard and seen so much about it. And I'll bring her over to the camera for you. If you'd like to step over, Pat. Hello. Hello, Pat. <laughs> if you stand here, I think they can see you. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Oh, well, I'm Patricia, and I used to be in a group called Spiral Paranormal in Surrey, and I moved to Suffolk, and I'm interested in uh, the local area and the history, and I heard about this church through Chris, and I'm really looking forward to this evening and see what we get. And uh, as I say, Pat's not an amateur at this, she's been doing this for years, so it will be interesting to see what kind of feedback you can generate from this experience. Yeah. What are you expecting? Well, I'm hoping that Reverend Kendall will come out tonight and we get some good EVP and good pictures. Have you smelled alcohol yet? No, not yet. No, no. that's his signature yeah. smell of alcohol. Yeah. I can actually smell it as I'm standing here talking to I did to hear a whistle. Yeah, and you heard a whistle earlier. Whistle, yeah. So you're mad keen and excited yeah, to carry on get, with this investigation with as much as I am. And of course, lastly, let's bring over Eddie. The man with the funny thumbs ups. <laughs> we make a joke about that because on one session here at uh, Santon Church, Eddie put his thumb up and somebody accused him of sticking his fingers up yeah, just did. to make an argument. <laughs> Eddie is a, a very convivial and polite gentleman and he would not do anything of that nature anyway. So oh, regardless. Anyway, Eddie, you know this church more so than anybody else. So tell us what's been happening here since we were last here. 
Well, we had one lady, she had a bra unclipped. Uh, a lady had a bra unclipped? Yeah, literally. She was sitting right there in this little poo just here. Uh -huh. And uh, she, all of a sudden she laughed, turned around, there she was, she slowly slid down the actual pew and put her hands behind the back. And, and reattached it. And she <laughs> said to a friend, she said, oh, I was coming down. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing about the Reverend Kendall is that the man, albeit in spirit, and over those centuries has not lost any of his sense of humour here. And uh, that is so typical of Kendall. And on occasions with the ghost box, we've had some amazing responses here, haven't we? Surprising to me, it made me believe in ghost boxes. I had no beliefs in ghost boxes. I want to just say another one that did happen. It's a bit naughty. Uh, a girl was actually near strangled. Mm. She felt tight, tightness around the throat. She said, it's like a hand. And what, what was the precursor for that? I mean, what actually generated that activity? Well, I have to say they are attracted to women and they can do nasty things. Well, I'm certainly hopeful he's not women going to tonight been, with Pat. Women has been scratched, they've been bit. Mm. Uh, so it's nothing mm. new. And I can remember one occasion here, he demanded children be brought to him. Do you mm. remember? I want... I know what I think I said, but... <laughs> what do you want? Children. Children? Um, when we were here last time, it was with Ursula Bielski and her two daughters, one called Ilsa. Mm -hmm. And this is what convinced Eddie for the ghost box. Yeah, seeing what kind of interaction Pat's going to get when she speaks to the Reverend Kendall on the yeah. ghost box okay. and and of course more importantly whether he's prepared to share any other activity with us but uh, that all remains to be seen and of course you are the first to see it so let's commence with the investigation and thank you for joining us okay first part of tonight's investigation we're going to start off with a night cam hopefully picking up some interesting activity which has been recorded as appearing here. Sometimes ghostly feet, sometimes all or light anomalies. And Eddie has a camera in the chancel by the altar which is pointing inwards into the church. So I'm going to sit around and see whether or not we can actually tap into any of the spiritual activity which has uh, been reported here. Are you excited though? Yeah, I can't wait. Can't wait I'm right. looking behind me. <laughs> I'm over here. I can't <laughs> I, wait. I've been looking, it, I'm really looking forward to this. Well, to Eddie, you see, this is Eddie's bread and butter. He's all, yeah. you know, lives and breathes this place. So, but anyway, we'll carry on. Let, can you hold it for a minute, Eddie, while I just do an open up? Right, okay. Oh, poor. Very, very strong, pungent smell of B.O body odour, not alcohol, which is uh, quite often smelled here, but body odour too, as I've discovered. That's well known. Yeah. Oh, it was really foul. It's Reverend Kendall, we've brought a friend here tonight who would like to touch base with you. Her name is Pat, or Patricia. She's a very nice, decent person, and I'm sure you'd like to make some level of communication with her, either tonight on the ghost cam, or on the camcorder. But um, we really are genuinely hopeful that you are prepared to talk to us and to give us some indication of your presence. I'm just going to just very quickly try and open up more. I just keep getting the impression that I, we all know, it's believed that he's buried somewhere in the chancel. Yeah. Um, but I'm getting the feeling that he is looking out from there. That's what I'm feeling at the moment. I smelt something very ghastly earlier, smell of BO, which is quite common here. 
haven't smelt the alcohol, which is also another signature smell of the Reverend. And um, we haven't seen any anomalies as yet, but it's early days. Are you feeling anything, Pat? Not yet. Eddie? I can honestly say yes. I had headaches since I've been coming in here. While you were doing your presentation at the beginning, I could hear voices come through. So it's a good chance you will get a real, a sort of loud uh, voice. Oh, I'm hopeful. Anything at all. Absolutely. I heard that. And uh, I've heard whistles. So that was as we were setting up. I heard the whistle. You heard the whistle, yeah, didn't you? Yeah. Whistle. yeah. Reverend Kendall. Oh, and I got the draft, that cold draft. Yep, the draft. That, yeah, that's about it. Reverend Kendall, could you please give us a sign of your presence for the benefit of Pat here, Patricia? Could you make a noise? Could you give us some indication, please? I know you really don't often do so, but we just wonder perhaps on this occasion. I've heard so much about you, Reverend. I'll see where he is now. He's above yeah. us. I've yeah. been feeling... You're a, bit, you're a bit of a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly well known, yeah. absolutely. Reverend Kendall, in your world, do you see the world as it is today, or do you still see the 17th century Laudian church, which was built by Thomas Bancroft, which is your church? Do you still see that, or do you see this church, which is now in its place? Could you please qualify that? Could you say something? And just one question, which does concern me a little bit, I have to say. Did you, a lady here, experience the feeling of being strangled? And another lady had a bra un unclasped? Is that uh, down to you or is that down to one of your friends? Because that's not a nice thing to do. Spirits of Saint and Church, we come here in love, light and peace. We know that there are more of you who are here. We just wondered perhaps if you are prepared to give us an indication of your presence here tonight. We come here in love, light and peace. We do not mean to offend. We do not mean to cause problems here. We come here with love, not hate. And we hope that you will respect us for it. get the impression of, uh, it's barely audible but I'm just it's almost like it's more of a feeling I suppose yeah. I could hear people talking in the background very 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 faint a lot of people say that like murmuring mm. probably wondering what they're going to choose to do next mm. I'm just feeling something over there Towards the chancel. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's somebody there. That's what I feel. Are you smelling any any unusual no, odours? I smell. I just feel that there's somebody standing over there. Oh right, okay. Yeah. What is your feeling of this church? You know, that sort of draw, that you're drawn to mm -hmm. going on there. What are you feeling at the moment about the vibes here? Uh, it feels quite calm and peaceful. Mm -hmm. Now we have the haunted pew that everybody who's come to this church have been, if you like, indoctrinated. It's part of a, like a ceremony for coming to Santon Church. Yeah. Everybody sits in the haunted pew. Would you like to have a sit in there yeah, and see if yeah, you pick anything up? Yeah. Okay. It's over here, isn't it? Yeah. If you go right over to the corner. Oh, this one here, is that? Yeah. And there's a little gate there oh. that opens. Oh, that's it. There you go. Let's I'll turn around here. I'll see if I can feel anything. Many people, but not all, have had strange experiences sat in the haunted pew. 
I've sat there. I know Eddie sat there in the past. I personally didn't. I don't think I experienced anything. I mean, I've been here so many times. But others have. Call out to the church. See if you can get a response. Is there anyone here, please? I'd like to leave a message. Or make a sound. A tap or a knock. Sorry? No, that was me actually, Eddie. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Can you do a knock, please? Is anyone here? Or appear as a, an a orb? There is a voice there. Can you appear as an orb? Or say something. Nice. I'm really looking forward to meeting you, Reverend. Possible. Yeah, I thought I heard something there. Something over there. By the pulpit. Yeah. Is that what the pulpit is on? Uh -huh. Picking up anything at all, Pat? No, I just feel like there's someone over there by the pulpit. Why don't you tell the Reverend Kendall what your interest is? Interest. Yeah, in your Wiccan interest. Oh, the witchcraft thing. Mm. Would he be interested, do you think? Well, we're, we're talking the 17th century. Now remember, we had Matthew Hopkins, Witchfinder General, yeah. running across the country at that period of history with his friend, Mr. Yeah. Stearns, picking on women such as yourself, which were mostly herbless people of such yeah. nature, um, and accusing them of being witches. So why don't you tell him? That you've got an interest in witchcraft, white witchery. Yes, yeah, so uh, Reverend Kendall, what do you think of witches? That I'm sat here in your church and I'm a witch. Are you happy about that? Very, very faint footsteps. Footsteps. Whereabouts, Eddie? Okay. In the chancel. Oh. Can you come closer? In the Reverend? chancel, well, my back's to it. I'm, I'm not, no, I didn't I hear anything. Like there was someone over there. Yeah, I yeah, I certainly feel a presence yeah. here. Can you come closer, Reverend? And sit next to me. Me. I hear you like the ladies. And you like a drink. Well, you, you may hear mine as I'm turning around. No, you won't know them when, oh. when you said that. You heard it as well. Yeah. We, we've actually, well, Eddie, Eddie actually captured a pair of footsteps moving at great faint. speed all the way down the aisle, literally. Yeah. There is, there is noises, but they're very faint. Mm -hmm. Maybe the camera will pick it up. Hopefully, as the you EVP. weren't moving when Eddie said about the footsteps. You I, 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 haven't, I didn't hear them. No, I'll be there, honest. There was a little, like it's like a little tap, like. 
The problem is when I'm filming, I'm more focused in on the yeah. subject rather than the than the actual session itself. What has happened in this pew? Has anything? Has people been hit, or is it in here? Well, let me go over to Eddie, and he'll tell you the story. Okay. What's the story of the haunted pew, Eddie? The haunted pew was a bit strange, really, because we had men, grown men, just burst into tears, no reason whatsoever. And I mean, so there was a guy he come straight out of this, out of the army, and he came here. He sat in the actual haunted pew, and he's he just flooded. Another one, he said, oh my God, I've never felt so sad in all my life, apart from when my dad died. Really? Uh, women have had cold breezes and that uh, just straight waft and strain the faces around the bodies and that. One or two have had scratch and fear, scratch feelings, being scratched. Just an interesting sort of situation as it's actually come through. I can imagine. I mean, it, it so many people have reported so many different things there. I've just seen but, a spirit. What about, I'm yeah. Just, I've just seen a spirit. Where? Where? Right between you, I said. Oh, he's here, is he? Into the chancel. No, you've just seen him walk past? Yeah. He's come at you. You were there and he come walking beside of you. What about you, Pat? What are you feeling? I, I feel there is somebody here, walking around, wandering about. Mm -hmm. I don't feel sadness or anything, I just feel that there is somebody here. Oh, he's certainly beyond feeling sad for himself. Yeah. I think he actually enjoys this. Yeah. He enjoys being here? Reverend Kendall, if you could say a few words for us. Are you happy that we're here? Is Walter here? Thelma, are you here? Henry, are you here? The story of Henry is one of the rare cases. We done a Ouija board in in here, and on the Ouija board we got the name Henry come out. When they played the recorder back afterwards, got the name come in. My name's Henry Owen. So that was very good. Uh, collaboration with board to actual uh, EVP. Well, let's hope tonight um, he's going to do something else which is incredible. Yeah, and I was talking about Augustus Welby Pugin. Uh, this screen here, this archway, very, very small screen, I hasten to add, it's, it's so reflective of his work and also the tiles are in there, the ceiling. It's just as an art piece, it's exquisite. Oh, now I'm taking it. Now I'm away from the camera. I can, I can start to feel. The young guy, a young woman. The guy is wearing a leather jerkin, sleeveless type of shirt. I can't get his trousers off what he's wearing below. He's got short fair hair, probably in his twenties. Girl of a similar age, got no description of her at all. I wonder if it's one of his, two of his friends, or whether these are things that he's generated. You see, the thing about the Reverend Kendall is that he is quite capable of generating some incredible activity and uh, not all earthbound spirits are capable of doing such things and he certainly is and he's very much connected to this church 
and he's certainly very connected to people that come to it. Got that bad smell of BO and a little whiff of alcohol, like uh, uh, spirits on the breath, that horrible foul smell. Let me just wander in here, Pat. Are you okay to follow me? Yeah, it's all looking at me. I'm going to find Eddie's camera for a minute. What's that? I mean, I know you've got the light from Eddie's camera, but just look at these tiles. They're absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I think I have a great deal of respect for this church as a, as a building, as an art piece. This is so beautiful. And if you point it up to the ceiling, it looks very medieval up there, Pat. Yeah, it's beautiful. So it's Gothic revivalist. Yeah. It's just incredibly beautiful. Okay, Pat, are you feeling anything? Yeah, I feel like there's someone in here with us standing here. Whereabouts? Here, over here. Behind you to yeah. the side. Just fall. Is it? The big girl we actually in that area. Yeah. I can still hear the voices in a faint distance discussing the issues of the day perhaps or how they intend to connect with us or avoid us, I don't know. Do you feel okay? Yeah, out there I was quite warm, but here I feel a bit shivery. It is very cold yeah. in here, yes. It's because this is his lair. This is, oh, the, is this it? Oh, yeah, this is where he's buried. Oh, is it? Mm. Oh, whereabouts? Somewhere beneath the yeah, chancel. My feet like, feel like frozen, they're really cold. When we've done a uh, dancing session, yeah. the actual dancing rods crossed exactly there. Oh, I should have brought a pendulum. His feet were caught by Eddie on camera disappearing as it entered into the chancel and it went below the threshold of the foot. Oh. Obviously, what you're feeling is he is here and yeah. his energy is very strong. Yeah, it's and it's palpable by the cold that you're feeling. Yeah, I, I was all right out there, but in here now I feel really cold and frozen. Do you mind us standing here, Reverend Kendall? No doubt you'll tell us when we go on to the uh, ghost box. And he's aware of that. I'm not, other than this, I'm not picking anything up. I'm not spotting any orbs or any anomalous activity, Eddie. It seems fairly benign at, at that level. But then you see, it's not always like that here, is it? It varies. 
had headaches. I also heard mm. noises since I've been here. So they definitely, definitely go along. <laughs> well, yes, the alcohol. The alcohol's just whisked. Yeah, I've just whiffed it. He's around. He's, he's walking around us. Yeah, I think he's in here. Can you copy this, please? Can you invert some light, please? Try and do anything that you possibly can. Let us know what you're here. Are you pleased to see Pat here? Copy me, please. Reverend Kendall, we, we don't want to act in a patronising way, but we, we are really trying to hope that you're going to open up and speak to us. And what we'll be doing very shortly, Reverend, we'll be bringing that device, the communicator that you referred to once as a communicator, and um, we'll see whether or not you, want, you wish to talk to us through the box, through the speaker. And uh, Eddie, you'll, you'll leave that camera to run, won't you? Yeah. yeah. Just to show you roughly, you can see the light there. Well, we've been here for a while. It's very, very cold tonight, and particularly so in here, as, as picked up by Pat. Um, I've certainly smelled alcohol. I smelled BO, which are part, part and parcel of course here. I've not seen any light anomalies, and I haven't heard any voices other than what appears to be a, a number of voices very faint in the background. Uh, so quiet I can't discern what the conversation is about but I can guess, I can guess it's about us. What we're going to do now, we're going to have a short break and then we're going to commence with a ghost box session and hopefully he will be able to reach out to us and perhaps even say hello to Pat, but uh, we'll leave that for a little later. Okay, we've now set up the PSP7, the ghost box as it's more commonly known as, and it's over by a small table there, and possibly the Reverend Kendall, or no doubt anyone connected with this beautiful building, will make some level of contact. We can never guarantee it, but it's like everything, unless you try, you don't know. So we're going over to the table now. Oh, a really, really foul smell. That was really, really foul. It was the smell of rotten tobacco and alcohol and BO and it just wafted over me. So he's obviously letting us know he's still here, very much connected to what we're doing. So now we're gonna continue with the ghost box session. I'm gonna position this master camera over on that table so that you can actually see what's taking place as we're doing it. Okay, Reverend, I have in front of me the device, the communicator that you used before to talk to us. I wonder perhaps whether you would like to say something to our new friend here, Pat, who's just joined you. Could you give us an indication, please? As you know, my name is Chris, and with Eddie, and no Eddie, and with Patricia. Do, do you like Patricia being here? That squawking noise, that's a build-up. Do you mind Pat being here tonight? Do you like her? Reverend Kendall. What would you like us to do? Oh, you're starting to talk. You're starting to talk. Yeah. 
Reverend Kendall, R Richard Kendall, can I can I bring over my friend Pat, Patricia, and let her talk to you? Hello. Are you here? Do you feel like you've been here? I've heard so much about you. If there's anyone else here apart from Reverend Kendall, who'd like to say hello? Hello. Who are you? I heard someone say hello. I said hello. Who would like to say hello? They said to say hello back. Who is it, please? Who just said hello? Can you tell me your name? Can you can you say that again? Who was that just said hello? Can you tell me your name, please? My name's Patricia. Are any other spirits in this church? Can you come through and leave us a message, please? If you're listening, do you mind Pat Patricia being here? Do you like her? Are you a lady friend of Reverend Kendall? still in spirit? Do you still have these parties here? Do you like the girls here, Reverend? You what did you say? Yeah. Yes. Do you like Patricia? Yes, sir. He said yes, sir, I think. He definitely said yes. Yeah. You want me to come back again? Yeah. You want me to return? Yes. Reverend Kendall, would you like Patricia to return? Would you like me to come again? Yes. 
Reverend Kendall, do you have a girlfriend? Is there some young filly that um, attracts your attention? Was it? Yeah. <laughs> you certainly, you're certainly a ladies' man, aren't you? Were women attracted to you? Or are women attracted to you? But you don't show yourself, so we can't qualify that, can we? Oh, I heard that. That wasn't me. What's that? That. Yeah, I, I heard it, yeah. I thought it was you. Oh, no. <laughs> There's nothing more beautiful, is there, Reverend, than the perfect shape of a female's body? <laughs> Getting all excited. <laughs> You know, it's a sort of, it's a language that he understands, but he seems to, um... The perfect Did you prefer the younger ones or the older ones? Or did you mind anything or two? <laughs> Were there other men in the orgies, or was it just all women in you? It must have been a son, because... How old were him? How old were you, Reverend? <laughs> Tell me, Reverend, just a straight question, nothing to do with the um, activities after dark here. How do you feel about people coming to this church, investigators, people that come here to communicate with you? How, how do you feel about that? Do you enjoy it, the interaction, or do you dislike it? And can I ask you, Reverend, why did you not go into the light? Because you are permanently based here, aren't you? Is it because of the parties that you enjoy? And how did you feel about Cromwell and his uh, Puritan allies? A typical thing that's going through my mind, Reverend, is, and I, I mean this with no disrespect, but you never really, you were never really into this religion thing, were you? Is able to talk to us? Can you tell me what my name is? This sound into words. We, we mentioned Ilsa when she was here. Sorry? How are we doing for time? Uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, we'll have to wrap it very shortly. Can you please come through and say something before we go? Because we're going soon. Do you want us to go? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you're bored with us. I'm boring you. I'm oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Okay, well, um, yeah, we'll call clean. it an end of the day. Clean, we've we've yeah. been here for a few hours. And we're we, boring them. <laughs> we're boring you, obviously. Look, we thank you very much for yeah. spending some time to talk to us. Okay, we've come to the end of this evening's investigation. It's been quite interesting. I won't say it's been one of those nights where lots of things have happened. We've certainly picked up strange smells and odours. 
and feedings, and I think Eddie mentioned that he saw the Reverend. It's certainly mist. I wouldn't like to say it's Reverend, but there was a mist. But um, the ghost, well, the ghost box session seemed to be quite fruitful. So until I've actually reviewed all the audio and gone through it on my computer, I won't know exactly what has been said. We certainly heard one or two key words, which I think are going to come into the conversation. But um, overall, it's been quite interesting, but very, very cold. It's bitterly cold in this building. And uh, of course, there's no electricity, there's no gas, there's no water, there's nothing. It's just an empty building, but one that's very beautiful, I have to say. Before I go to Eddie, Pat, yeah. impressions? There's definitely a presence in this church. When I was on the chancel, in the chancel, I got, my, I got really cold and I couldn't feel my toes. My, I was frozen. And in there, I, when I came out of that in the room, vestry. the vestry, I came yeah. out of the room and I started getting an ache in my shoulder. Mm -hmm. And I just felt there was a female presence. And then on the EVP, we picked up a female voice. So it's so, been quite interesting yeah, for you. Yeah, very interesting. Does, has it lived up to the reputation? Yeah, see, I, I feel there is, if you came at different times of the day, you probably pick up on different spirits. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah certain times of the day, yeah. a week. And, yeah. yeah. Eddie, yourself, what do you think? It's been interesting. Well, as you say, I wouldn't say it's overly compared to what I have had. No, but there's been interactions. Um, there has been, yeah. Certainly voices I've heard. Um, like I say, you said about the mist. I said about the mist. Yeah, yeah. definitely saw that. Uh, don't think I got on camera, unfortunately. But there you go. Um, heard voices, as I say. And and the knocks. I just saw the knocks, didn't we? We did. Yeah, we heard the knocks as well. Yeah. Yeah. I felt a cold draft when I was standing. Yes, you did. You reported yeah, that. Yeah, very, very cold. But like someone had swept past. Yeah, yeah. that's the feeling you get. Yeah. And I, I had that as well. And I had yeah. that really bad, odorous smell of uh, BO, alcohol, and cigarettes, stale tobacco. Not cigarettes, tobacco. <laughs> And so, uh, the shoulder is painful shoulder. Yeah, the painful well shoulder known. and the neck, it goes up to the neck. Yeah, it's well known. Oh, is that a lot of that? people has reported it inside oh, right. the church. Yeah. experienced something that's happened there. Yeah. And they've actually gone down yarn. And oh, they've right. also had it lodged at the chest. Right. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's good then. Well, anyway, it's running really late. It's coming up to midnight now. I've got to drive for two hours. Um, I've got to drop Eddie off, then I've got to drop Pat off in Suffolk, and then I've got to drive the way down to my home in Essex. So it's quite a journey. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the company of yeah, Pat, I've really and I've enjoyed it. Eddie's company. And our next investigation will be at my house. It's <laughs> going to be interesting. Yeah. Very quickly, what type of property do you live in? Pat? It's a 17th century Grade Two listed thatch. Cottage. And it's right next to the church, isn't it? Yes, right next to the church, St Mary's. There's a little bit of a theory that St Mary's Church, the land immediately in front where her house is built, it, your house was built roughly about the time after oh, the Reformation. Yeah, that's right. And quite a lot of church land was taken off the church and given to other people. And I'm fairly certain that the section of land where your house is once belonged to the church. Yeah. And you found yeah. some interesting bits and pieces in the garden. You yeah. found a child's dress ring. Which which yeah. we think is 17th century. Yeah, some sure. coins. And coins as well. Yeah, coins. So there's certainly a lot of activity there. Um, it's got a history of some activity, and yeah. Pat has certainly experienced it. When I was there last time, where I popped around and we had a chat through everything, and I certainly saw great light, great light anomalies over the fireplace and all around the room, and quite big light anomalies. So um, I'm certainly hopeful that when we go there, we're going to pick up a lot of great activity. Mm. Hopefully it won't scare the living daylights no. out of you. <laughs> but anyway, ladies and gentlemen and everybody, thank you very much for watching our show tonight. We hope that you've enjoyed this and we hope that you look forward to future presentations from me, Chris Holton, Pat Burke and Eddie Mallett. Okay. And Pat, 
will be joining us at appropriate times on other investigations in the future. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, because okay. she's certainly well up for it. And I think it's great to have a female team member because quite often the places yeah, we go to, women tend to draw better reaction than men. Okay. So I think that could be quite useful. Oh, good. <laughs> well, thank you for coming along oh, tonight, Pat. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you, everybody. Good night. <laughs>